You have reached the Human K channel. Today, we're going to learn more about personality ideas, which are very interesting. As we look at different points of view, it's important to remember that each theory has a different way of measuring personality. Now, let's talk about the important work that Robert McRae and Paul Costa did in the 1980s when they did a lot of study on personality. Working at the National Institutes of Health's Gerontology Research Center in the U.S., McRae and Costa found what they called the Big Five Factors neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. In the area of personality psychology, these factors are seen as strong and have gotten a lot of attention. In fact, McRae himself said that the five-factor model was a turning point in the history of personality psychology. Now, we'll talk about how the neo-personality inventory came to be and how it helps us understand the big five factors. After Robert McRae and Paul Costa found the big five factors, they used different evaluation methods to make sure they were correct. Some of these methods were self-ratings, objective tests, and accounts from observers. Through this strict process, they were able to prove that the factors were true. McRae and Costa made the Neo-Personality Inventory to help with further study and practical applications. The name Neo comes from the first three factors, neuroticism, openness, and extroversion. The inventory has been changed over time and is now offered in more than one way. In addition to the full-length version, a shorter version has been made for research reasons, especially for online administration. This makes it easier for experts to gather information. Also, researchers were moved by McRae and Costa's work to make adjective checklists that make the five factors easier to measure. On these checklists, people who are part of a study are given a list of terms, and they choose the ones that best describe them. Some checklists have 100 words on them, while others are shorter and only have 40. It's important to note that the Neo-Personality Inventory is still the most common way to measure the Big Five. Its results are the same across different testing methods, which shows that these factors are good indicators of personality. But we also have to be honest and say that self-report surveys, like the Neo, can be wrong. Some people change how they act on purpose to give the idea that they are doing well psychologically. This means that self-report inventory data should be interpreted with care. Now, we'll talk about the interesting results of study on the five personality factors that McRae and Costa proposed. These results tell us a lot about what these things are and how stable they are. First of all, many studies have shown that neuroticism, extroversion, openness, and conscientiousness are strongly influenced by genetics. This shows that our genes are responsible for a big part of these characteristics. On the other hand, the agreeableness factor shows that the surroundings plays a big role. This means that the surroundings, such as a person's upbringing and social interactions, has a big impact on how agreeable they are. Surprisingly, these five things have been seen in many different countries. People from different cultures tend to have different levels of neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness, which shows that these traits are global. Also, study shows that most of these factors stay fairly stable to some degree over the course of a person's life. Even though there may be small changes, people's amounts of neuroticism, extroversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness tend to stay the same as they move through different stages of life. Studies have shown that men and women report having different amounts of these personality traits. Compared to men, women tend to report higher amounts of neuroticism, extroversion, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. Another interesting finding is that we often think that other people are more responsible and less anxious than we are. This is called the better than average effect, and it shows how we tend to think more positively about ourselves when it comes to certain mental traits. As we learn more about people through study, it's important to keep these results in mind. They help us understand the complexity of the human mind and the many things that affect how we act. That's all we're going to talk about today. I want you all to keep looking into the studies on the five factors of personality and what they mean.